What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec, and we'll be doing underpass from Hack the Box, which is a pretty easy box once you get past the initial recon, because the initial end map gives you absolutely nothing to go off of. But if you scan UDP, you can see SNMP is open with the default community string. And if you do SNMP walk the box, it tells you the server is hosting a Dallo Radius server, which helps you find the login page for the web server. It has default credentials, and for some reason, Dallo Radius exposes password hashes of users, which you can crack and then log in via SSH. Here you can use sudo to start a mosh server, which stands for mobile shell. So you start it, then connect to the shell and get root. So with that being said, let's just jump in. As always, we start off with an end map. So dash sc for default scripts, sv enumerate versions, dash vv for double verbose. This gives us things like the TTL, OA, output all formats, playing the end map directory and call it underpass. And then the IP address, which is 1010.11.48. This can take some time to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just two ports open. The first one being SSH on port 22, and the banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. We also have HTTP on port 80, it's better tells us it's Apache also running on Ubuntu. And the title page is just the default Apache to Ubuntu it works page. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. So we can do HTTP 10.10.11.48. And we just see this default page. And since we don't have any type of hostname leakage yet, I'm just gonna start off with a GoBuster to see if there's any hidden directories, right? So we can do a GoBuster directory mode, URL HTTP 10.10.11.48. And the word list we'll use is opt sec list, um, discovery, web content, then raft small words dot text. And let that go and see if it finds any directories. And then while that goes, we can also test other ports. So we only did like the top 1000 TCP. I like also testing for like um, SNMP when I run into an issue, like I can't find anything. So that's port 161 on UDP, so dash S capital U and then 10, 10, 11, 48. And we can see UD, uh, SNMP is open. And the reason why I test it specifically, because if we just did like dash V to test the top 1000 ports, this scan can take quite a while. So I like just testing like SNMP, TFTP, um, NFS, and like the port mapper service, which I think is 2049 or something. But there's a, just a few UDP ports I normally test for right off the start. So let's go ahead and check out what SNMP has to say. So we'll do an SNMP walk. Uh, the default community string is gonna be public. And then I'm gonna specify version 2C, which is just the default SNMP version. We can do 10, 10, 11 .48, And we get some information back. Now, this isn't exactly human readable. This is just in uh, some SNMP format. We could switch the MIBS to all. And it's not working, okay. So what we have to do is two things. So we have to do sudo v etsy snmp, then snmp.conf, and then uncomment this mibs directory. So now when I run this, um, it still didn't do it. So there's probably one other thing I have to do. So we have that uncommented. I have to now install the snmp mibs downloader. So I think it's that's what this name. So we'll do sudo apt get install snmp mibs downloader. I think that's the program. Yes, it is. And I think the whole reason behind this is some like licensing thing where they can't just um, give all the MIBs on a default install because it's a weird license violation. I don't fully understand the issue, but I think that's what it is. It doesn't really make sense otherwise to me. So once this installs, we can run that SNMP walk command again, and then hopefully we get a bit more information. We can see there it's now processing all the SNMP MIBs. And let's run this S same SNMP walk command. And there we go. So now instead of all those numbers, we have human readable names. So let's see, what is there here? So we have the uptime, which is two days right now. Uh, we have the kernel version. So we can kind of see the last time this box was updated. Um, let's see, let's just go to the top. And let's see, kernel uptime, um, an email. So now we have the host name of the box, which is underpass.htb. And it's saying it is the only Dallow Radius server in the basin. So um, this is a hint that is running software called Dallow Radius. If we search Dallow Radius on, um, I guess this is DuckDuckGo, hopefully it brings us to the GitHub page. Uh, we have that, and then we also have this. 
So it is running Dalla Radius, which is open source software. And if we went to this page and just did slash Dalla Radius, we have a HTTP forbidden. So we found a directory in here. Um, so we can kill off this go buster and then I can focus on the Dalla Radius directory to see if we can get any files inside of it. And we could also just easily test for that. So if we're on GitHub, I like just searching for like one of the files here. So normally I do like readme.md because most open source programs have that because that's how um, GitHub shows like this thing. So that's why I normally just test readme.md and we can see the file. So we know right now or right off the bat, the um, HTTP server is configured to just block us on getting the Dalla Radius folder. But if we specify things um, inside of the folder, it seems to work. So looking here, I don't see any logins. Uh, we have a few directories. We have setup, doc, contrib, and app. So I'm gonna try slash app to see if we get anything. We still have a forbidden. So maybe it's not um, blocking us from this directory. Maybe it's just saying there's no um, index.html to show directory listings, right? So we have opt common operators and users. So if I try app users, oh, we get a login. So let's try also operators to see if that is a login. So everything looks like it is giving us a login required. So we wanna know what the default credential is. So I'm gonna get Google default credential Dallo radius. And if this doesn't pull it up, then I just go search the um, GitHub installation to see. Uh, let's see, administrator and radius. So if we search for administrator and then radius, we get logged in. And I spent some time here trying to find a way to get code execution. Like I tried editing a lot of the config because normally like PHP apps will um, do a include config file, right? So normally if you put PHP code somewhere in here, uh, you can get code execution. And I forgot to revert the box, so you still see uh, me editing this allow random characters. But if we try this, so if we did PHP, um, we can do echo test. It doesn't actually save this, right? So first it wants to match the requested format. So I'm gonna get rid of that. We can switch this to go through burp suite. Go proxy, intercept is on. Um, we will send, and then we'll just put the string at the end, like that. And then we can also URL encode it, just in case we have to. Since in the post, I don't think we have to, but it really does not matter. So configuration was updated. I'm going to uh, refresh, wait, okay and we have just the same exact string. That's not what I was seeing earlier, but let's see. Test. Okay, so it um, did the sanitization. So it's like cross-site scripting protection. So it didn't put the actual um, less than equal, so that's probably why it did not um, execute. So I'm just gonna try without URL encoding it real quick. So we'll save it without the PHP string. Let's intercept on. We have the post, put that in, forward it. Configuration has been updated. Go to database, go back to user. So it looks like it's doing sanitization. Less than equal. So I tried doing this on a lot of fields. I never could get it to um, do code execution. So I was going around, we looked at management features. Um, if I click on like radius log, uh, we have errors reading the log file. All these logs we can't read. So I was trying to use this with a um, like, file disclosure if we could change the log file, but it doesn't look like we can because there's no parameter that will 
um, set the file, right? When I click download radius log, we're actually going to a PHP file that specifies to access Dalla radius. If I go to this radius log, same thing. If it was question mark file is equal to, then you may have a file disclosure vulnerability. But in this case, uh, we didn't. So if we go to management users, let's see, and then list users, it actually shows password hashes of users. So I'm going to see how many characters this is. So we'll do echo this password hash WC dash C. I'm going to do dash N so we don't get the line break at the end. And that's 32. So this is most likely a MD5 sum. So we can just go to crack station and input this. We could also use a tool like Hashcat to crack it. Um, normally, if a password is not salted, then I will just quickly go to um, crack station, submit it real quick to see if it is. So let's go crack hash. And we get the password underwater friends. And that user is, was it SVC Mosh? There we go, SVC Mosh. So you can try SSHing as that user. So if we do SSH, SVC Mosh at under, I don't even think I did the host name in the file. So we do 10, 10, 11, 48. Put in that password. And it did not accept it. So I'm going to do a capital M because on Linux, things are case sensitive. And we can see it does have a capital M there. Put in the password. And there we go. We get logged in. If I do a sudo dash L, we can see I can run the mosh server as root. So I'm gonna do a man mosh and see what this is, a mobile shell with remote intelligent local echo. So this looks like it's just a shell. Um, let's do mosh dash server, is there a page here? Program helper, find a local interface. Default is UDP port. Operating system pick the available. So let's see. I'm just going to do a sudo mosh server. And we see uh, mosh connect on port 60,001. And then we have this string. If I do a mosh uh, client, is that installed? It is. I'm going to specify 127.001. And let's see. It wants the port as well. So we'll do that. It says mosh key environment variable not found. So let's just set that. And I'm guessing this is going to be the key. And there we go. We have successfully gotten root. So mosh is kind of like a just alternative, I guess, to SSH that just works over UDP. We stamp the server, it gives us the password, we just connect to it, and that's how we get in. So um, that's gonna be the box, pretty simple. Hope you guys enjoyed it, take care, and I will see you all next time.